the, like let's take the world championships it will definitely be 100 percent harder to qualify for it than last season because it's two times more than two times of the amount of athletes last year i think it was roughly two percent of the people and now we are down to one percent hey everybody i'm outside well the interview is not outside but you'll see this interview right now with christian haven't spoken to him on the show in about three years so much has happened i couldn't wait to dive in and find out all the things that have changed what their plans are for the future and let's get into it christian and i oh here we go yeah. we were talking it's really funny because we were talking about even then what cities in america you would come to which i know we're going to find out eventually here yes. but even back then we were having you and i were having a conversation and you were like ah oh, we think nashville and i said i was like arguing well no you you actually asked my opinion and i said well i live in atlanta and i do think it's a larger market so i think you should come to atlanta instead of coming to nashville and then we named a bunch of other cities uh, yeah. that you still haven't been to but i understand you wanted to wait till the numbers got there so you know you guys are now we know the numbers we know how many countries every other day there's an article about you i guess the question i would ask you to be very honest in those yeah. days, those early days in America, was still only pulling in 400 people, which is yeah. what we had in those first Chicago events. Did you ever doubt it? Did you ever think, oh, maybe we can't crack America? Maybe we will just be bigger in Germany and England and hopefully the rest of Europe. Did you ever doubt it in those times? I, to be very honest, I really honestly never doubted it. I, I, I you have to say, I, I was actually even surprised that it took us longer than in other markets uh, and i had to learn the not the hard way but we had to learn that america is a bit more difficult and a bit more different than or other than entering other markets which especially in fitness uh and um but i i don't know why i'm always a very positive thinking person and i'm so convinced about our product and for me, that was always clear. If this works, let's say in the UK, which let's say culturally, language-wise, is probably the closest to the US what you can find. Uh, if it works so well in the UK, why should it not work in the US? So it, 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 for me, that there was never an argument. So I just we just realized it takes a bit longer to go to find a way through all the noise in America around fitness and everything what's going on there, which is, let's say, 10 times bigger or more than in any other country in the world. It takes more time or, or you put millions and millions of dollars on the table uh, and you put and you throwing this into marketing or it takes a bit longer to convince everyone with quality and with the product and producing good events that uh, and one, and then you hit the tipping point, and then I think America speeds up like no other country. Also, when they, when they understand it and they pick it up, and then it becomes a new thing, etc. And uh, but honestly, yeah, no, I never doubted it. Maybe I'm naive, or I don't know. But it's uh, I was actually always extremely positive, even also for America. Well. We're at the point now where it's almost every weekend and we we can talk about the elite side later and kind of how we want that sort of season to be. Yeah. But is there a is there a is there a limit? Is there like, OK, if we're doing 100 events a year, that's two a weekend somewhere in the world. And that's probably as much as we're ever going to get. Like, have you thought that far ahead? Well, I have to. This is my job, right? I have to. <laughs> Not everybody does, though. Not everybody thinks that way. No, but it's it's a very good question. And this is honestly, this is what I, this is my biggest, I think about this every day. And I, I'm, I'm looking at other examples that have been out there in the world. And uh, I try to look at everything that, which somehow you can compare, whether it's Ironman, whether it's, marathon events whether it was obstacle racing spartan triathlon so uh it's and I, so we i think we have a very clear game plan of what we want to achieve and i'm also very clear 
we don't want to own everything. We don't want to own 100% of the market. We don't want to own... Look, we created something which we call fitness racing, right? Which was not exi- which was always existing as a training, but it was never, no one labeled it, no one ever gave it a name, no one ever put it into a format, and, and, and no one ever made a sport out of it. But, and Hyrox is a version of fitness racing. Uh, and it's, it's a very interesting... So you've, you've created a vertical, basically. You've helped Correct. create a new Correct. vertical. Which so I everything, that come, everything that comes after is kind of like, okay, this is a thing that we can do, which is, let's call it... I mean, the best way I explain it is it's like CrossFit without any complex movements. It's everything that people can do in you know physical fitness domain without gymnastics and without complex movements so you can push yeah, it's, pull, it's, you... Not, it's it's not crossfit without complex movements it's it's a different sport it's a different sport of fitness uh like you have boxing and mixed martial arts or you have karate and jiu-jitsu and they you can always say this is, is they are martial arts but these are very different sports with very different rules and very different athletes so we've seen it that the best boxers in the world always beat the best mixed martial art fighter and other way the other way around it would be exactly the same right different kind of training different kind of techniques different kind of approach uh and this is exactly so let's get back to the point though we were saying you created a new vertical called fitness racing so yes. you were going i believe this will be so there's CrossFit, there's running, there's uh, triathlon, and there's a new vertical that is fitness racing, which I believe will be one will be a very substantial vertical uh, in the whole industry and for the people in the world, and I believe it will be one of the biggest verticals in the world of sport, probably like running, because it's so accessible. It is in the same way easy to do like running. You also only need a pair of shoes and a pair of shorts to do it. And you can do it everywhere, wherever you are, uh, because uh, you can. So these are simple p- principles and basic uh, elements why I believe uh, it will be very popular. And on the other side, it's a, it's a perfect training. If you can say it's the healthiest way of training for the, for the broad amount of people. Uh, and there will always be people that want more extreme stuff and the, and we will fill the funnel and from our world people will go to CrossFit and, and or go to and there will be other versions of fitness racing which is crystal clear there already are some right like Decker Fit which is a which is a short version of let's say of, of High Rocks with a little bit of different workouts but basically it's half of what we do uh, so that's not the point, and this is good, and we don't consider this as competition. This is also filling the funnel and is making the sport bigger. I'm honestly, I'm shocked there isn't more, and I don't know what you're hearing, but I've been saying since pretty much day one, another player is going to come in, maybe a brand we already know, maybe an unknown brand, but there's boardroom somewhere where someone's looking at you, High Rocks, seeing the dollars, now execution and everything else is has to still happen but they yeah. see it as the opportunity and like wow let's put on one of these things so the only ones we really seen cuz crossfit comps already exist but that's different that's already this other thing and those are always kind of one on one local so deca is one and they have their own struggles and then these guys that do ethics which is to me that's a lot closer but they haven't scaled as quickly as they thought they would. So I'm, again, I don't know what you've heard, but I'm waiting for at least one other really big player to say, well, we're going to get some of those millions and millions of high rocks dollars that are out there. Well, first of all, I don't think it's that easy. Second, we... It's definitely not easy. you got to execute. But I'm saying, just like everybody launched an obstacle race in 2011, 12, 13. But there's a difference. There's a major difference. Uh Obstacle racing. So we apparently we are an indoor event, which means we need specific <laughs> venues. That seems easier than putting on an outdoor event with crazy obstacles. Much easier. But there's only a limited amount of venues that are available in the most exciting cities. 
The okay. obstacle racing was in the middle of nowhere, and you can right. basically put it on on every farm you can find right. outside of Chicago. And uh, <laughs> it was easy to multi to duplicate from for people. And they said, "Okay, you know what?" Uh, and it was an experience. So they said, "I do other obstacles. My obstacles are higher, bigger, more exciting, more water, more mud, whatever the, the story was." And they. It was easy to say, well, look, we found another venue outside of Chicago where we do it, where we're doing it. We are, let's take Chicago as an example. We are at Navy Pier. Uh, and we, trust me, research, we research every major city in the world about the proper venues and what are the options. In Chicago, when you come also take financials into account, Plus, you think we need a roof on top of us and we need over 200,000 square feet. Uh, your options are dramatically limited, uh, up to zero other options. So, uh, and we are building these iconic events now in these iconic locations in iconic cities. Uh, and we are growing these events and we want to produce, and this is our vision, right? We want to produce 120. In the 120 most exciting cities in the world, we want to operate the best fitness events every year, once a year. And in some cities too, but not many. Uh, maybe London, like the really, really like very big ones. Uh, but in general, we want to look at the, let's say 120, don't name it down on this, maybe it's 130, maybe it's 110, doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, that's, that's, what, that's our goal. So we're missing Beijing, we're missing Shanghai, we're missing Tokyo. It's still a long list, right? Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Johannesburg. Uh, Johannesburg. Cape Town is coming now. Joburg is coming soon. But there's still... Moscow? Well, for sure. Moscow Eventually. Has, has Eventually. <laughs> yes, would be a great market. But Well, but see, here's what's interesting, though, that you and I discussed this a little bit in New York, the iconic venue, right? And we loved Pier 76, right? Yeah. Amazing. And yeah. if it rained, we were screwed. I know. So will you gamble yeah. with more indoor-outdoor venues? No, because of that. <laughs> uh, I, I trust me, we will invest $100,000 to make Pier 76 safer. Because one thing is also clear, I don't think we'll be, we will be that lucky again that we have such a perfect day. Right. Uh, so we have to be prepared that it's not the same perfect day. So we will invest now substantial money to come up with solutions to make this, whether it's, it, will be, it will be a lot of tenting to make this safe, whatever the weather conditions are. Uh, but we, that's the reason why we are not looking to go now every weekend outdoors. Because then it's clear the Thunderdome will hit our event and then the shit hits the fan. Uh, we are not looking for that. We, we are very happy with our indoor solution, but we are looking now for look, Olymp National Stadium in Singapore is a, is a football stadium, but it has a roof. Uh, it's, it's a close, it's still a controlled environment, but very different than a convention center. So this is a big play for us to look at massive indoor arenas I, I, uh, yeah i i didn't want to get to this question so fast but i have to ask. do shoot you're a smart man mm. you're a businessman is this a scale and flip not flip sc grow invent scale grow sell or matt this is my baby and i want to stay with it forever honest yeah. answer is on, on, it's my baby and I want to stay with it forever. Love it. I'm not so doing even if you get outside money, even if you get outside money, which is very possible, you can you want to you want to hold the reins, hold the wheel. 100%. I try to keep control of the product. It's not about money. And I'm in a maybe in a kind of luxury situation that because in my past careers I sold a couple of companies. I'm not I don't need to do this to make money. And, and I'm not doing this at all to become a very rich person. It's not any motivation at all. We, 
and this is a great story because look, I had this idea and now it becomes a sport, a global sport. I mean, this is how cool is that, right? I'm maybe cool. I'm like, maybe I'm the Dana White of fitness racing or whatever. There you go. Uh, and this you're is a lot more cool. Christian. You're you're very, oh, he you're sold. Very... I mean, I know he sold his property. No, but but you're also. I was just going to say you're much more pleasant guy than Dana White. Oh, I'll come up with another. Guy. I'll come up with another comp. But I, I get what you're saying. I never met him. No, so <laughs> that's the story. What we want to do is, like I said, we want to we want to operate, let's say 120, and we are at 77 right now, uh, roughly. Or individual city 72, 73. So maybe like another 30, 40 cities to go. So you're, we're, so we're going to hear 30 new cities this year? No, not not. You hear quite a lot of new cities in the next 12 months, but let's say in the next 24 months okay uh then and we are super happy with that and then then the which is which is a big task and a big challenge to build the teams up and to deliver the best quality we can deliver for our community and our job is to every year step up to step up the game and make it even more exciting and even better come yeah, up so, so, and a lot so of last, stuff. so last so yeah. last year was 54 weekends only a couple were duplicated. Correct. So we're in the 40 city range and 20 countries. What new countries are we hitting in 25? We're hitting next season, so 20, rest of 24 and 25, we are hitting China, we're hitting Japan, we're hitting India, South Africa is coming apparently with Cape Town in September. Uh, and we are hitting, hitting, hitting probably uh, in 25, Vietnam, Thailand, um, and, and Brazil. Wow. So, so far, that's all APAC except for Brazil. So a lot of, what's the, what's the fitness world like in South America? Brazil is the second biggest fitness market in the world uh, behind the U.S., uh, All right. Well, let's get well, going then. What are we waiting on? No, big last big market we are missing, but it's a very not easy. Apparently, difficult language, very different culturally, uh, pretty protected. Um, however, uh, it, no, Brazil was obviously the second biggest fitness market in the world by far, but now China is on the way to overtake them. Uh, and China, I think, is on the way to become the biggest fitness market in the world. It's just in numbers and gyms and gym numbers. It's, I just came back from China. It's unbelievable. Well, you talk about space. Where's the space over there? You talk about finding room. Or, did, or do you have a lot of space in China? Uh, they have everything is bigger in China. So even the convention. I thought that everybody was packed in because of all the people. No, it's totally different. It's the big cities are lots of people, but also lots of space. Big Without, building, uh, with, large halls, large convention centers, large event halls, stadiums. It's uh, a lot of choices, but totally underdeveloped. I mean, apparently there's not this event culture yet, and uh, this is just starting. However, all super exciting. Uh, India will be very, very interesting. Uh, even more people versus available space than China. Uh, so, uh, and Brazil is, uh, of course, different. Uh, longer around, a bit more developed, uh, but also very focused on these metropolitan areas like Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, uh, nope. Bahia, et cetera. But, um, so this, these are the markets that are coming. And then, of course, there might be on the way some smaller countries joining in. Uh, the rest of Europe. Uh, Luxembourg. Yeah, Luxembourg. <laughs> Maybe. I just spoke with an athlete from Luxembourg yesterday, so I was thinking about it. Okay, I have yeah. to ask you about. I have to ask you about venues. Yeah. Big, big topic. Everybody's always as soon as the announcement. What's the track going to be like? What's the layout? What's the zones? I understand different venues every market. Why is it not possible to at least get it down to say two or three, depending on 
if the venue is longer than it is wide or wider than it is long, we've got like an A, B, and C course. Why can we not? Why are they all different? Can we get it to an A, B, and C course? And then at least you know. We are pretty close to that, A, B, C. Uh, why this is not exactly A, B, C is the, the venues are always like a rectangle or more a square kind of shape. But sometimes it's an L, sometimes it's a T, sometimes you have to connect <laughs> two or three halls that, that create other difficulties. And sometimes they have pillars or columns. And that makes ah. it, it's the same rectangle space, but they have a lot but of... But the pillars, pillars are in the way. Yeah. I hadn't thought of Suddenly that. You have to work around the pillars and then that changes it to uh, the same hall, but without pillars. Uh, not much. It's a little bit. It's not much. It's a bit. But uh, however, in the end, we, I totally agree with you. We try to reach very much A, B, C. And, and even A and C, the differences are very marginal. Uh, so like the way from start into how you merge this into the run course and uh, like a lot of elements that we try to make it as comparable as possible. On the other hand, Look, if you every other mass participation event or, or sport with mass participation elements, marathon running, triathlon, obstacle course racing, cycling, these events are fundamentally different, like not even comparable. Uh, we are probably the most comparable event series you can find out there. Except uh, that when I ask you if we want to change it, you say, no, why would we change it? We want it to be the same. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I'm just saying also, I want it to people, it's a, it's a sport where people compare their times. In marathon running, apparently it's always exactly the same distance, but the elevation is so <coughs> The temperature, the weather temperature conditions are so different that this has massive impact on the times. So like New York City will always be dramatically slower than Berlin. Uh, and significantly slower, but it's very hard to to judge, and because also the difference between certain runners is smaller than for other runners. Um, we are very, very close, uh, much closer uh, between the different events. Uh, of course, sometimes it's one lap, sometimes it's three or two and a half laps. Uh, that might have a little impact on your runtime, but it's we talk about seconds here and not about minutes. Um, so we try to deliver that. On the other hand, we want different experiences. So with, which basically has to do with that the Berlin Tempelhof event provides a very different experience than the New York City event versus the National Stadium in Singapore or Olympia London in London or you know other locations and or classical conventions and or Navy Pier. It's not only Suddenly, it's because it's not only indoors. It's, it's, they have a different vibe. They have a different... So if we're offering this, but this leads to this question on the pro side. If we're, if we're going to get to this many cities, is it possible we do start to minimize which races you can qualify at? Because I don't, begr I don't begrudge... Yeah, yeah because I don't begrudge there's a tiny percentage of elites. I, I, I get you're a mass participation sport, but if we if we admit that all these factors do make a difference, do we maybe eventually say, okay, we know this is a beautiful venue, but the times will not gel. So it does yeah, not. Yeah. So I have to say, the World Championships, of course, is our prime product. It's amazing. This is, the, I mean, the energy at that event is on the next level. Everyone, of course, is very committed high road athletes. They are the fastest in the world. But the qualification now is more or less not depending on times. It's always head-to-head -head racing. So we provide qualifying slots to every event. But at this event, everyone has the same conditions and it's about one, two, three. Uh, and not about the time. Um, time, yes, in a way, yes. But they do it on the same day, you know, on the same course. Maybe not in the same start wave, but it's definitely like 100% comparable. They have exactly the same conditions. Um, so they don't fight about the qualifying slot with someone racing in New York when I'm racing in Berlin. 
Well, it's all day between all everyone who's on the start line in Berlin. Uh, and with a pro on elite level, we have now found a system which is more or less also not based on time. Though I know to get into the elite 15 major events, you need, it is depending on times, but there is also a last qualifier race where everyone can sign up to, to win one of the spots. That takes, in the end, takes the time element out of the occasion. So if someone hits an extremely fast time out of the blue, because for whatever reason that race was fast, you don't qualify for the Worlds because of that. So I think we try to eliminate that factor, even if it's about seconds. Uh, so, and we want that the qualification for World Championships is head-to-head -head racing. So we're looking at doing a similar thing this year for the majors where qualifying times will go back to last year and then race your way in at the majors. Correct. But we also, I can't give you all the details now because we are about to launch it. Right. Uh, and I don't know when your podcast will. Well, I was going to save all that stuff for the end. And then we could, I was going to say we could, because all this stuff, you and I are just talking about the business, which I think people really want to know. And I think aren't hearing about as oh, much. Yeah, totally. um, yeah. So we could save all that to the end and then maybe do a couple things that you could talk about. And then we can wait yeah. on that to launch. Yeah. Um, so, so let's do that. Some exciting news coming. We, we also, also we learn every season, right? We learn. You can't change the rules or like a qualifying system within the season. You have to wait. Of course. Them. Yes, of course. And every season we learn, we see, we get the feedback and we try to improve. I think this season was very much improved. 23, 24 was, yeah. People had yes. much less to complain about. And again, you know, Doug and I have talked about this. The Elite 15 are valuable. They do help uh, tip of the spear. They do help tip of the funnel, whatever you want to call it. However, like they can be loud and angry and they can be the very loud and angry minority as opposed to the majority. So I understand you don't listen to everything they say, but sometimes they have. Really oh, we do, we do. We listen to, we try to listen to everyone. And an elite athlete is not more important than a dedicated age cooper who's racing. Uh, uh, because, because you're totally right. We are living, we are living from the community and not from the five top elite athletes. They are not right. bringing millions of dollars in TV money. Right. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case yet. <laughs> uh, so um, we 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 listen. We try to listen to everyone. It's not always that easy. And we because it's so it's going so fast. You can imagine a lot of people have an opinion and and ideas, etc. But we take we try to take all. Of it. So there will be a lot of little changes. Uh, and I think it's definitely even next step, even better than last season. Uh, but also one thing is clear that like, let's take the world championships. It will definitely be a hundred percent harder to qualify for it than last season because it's two times more than two times of the amount of athletes. So right. last year, I think it was roughly 2% of the people. And now we are down to 1% of the, of the athletes that, that have a chance to qualify so it's it's getting tough it's getting hard uh, so there will be less spots available per event versus right. last season my, more my, yeah. my experience with ocr and hybrid is you those age group ambassadors age group athletes are your biggest ambassadors it's most important to them to qualify, to get those flags. They talk about it the most. They post all the time. They're the ones that are more likely to get their friends from the gym, even more the elites who might only travel, train at their house or with each other or whatever. So growing that base is, I think, what you guys have done a really good job of. Those people are unbelievably loyal. Yeah, I know 100%. It's, it's amazing. And every day, this is our job. We have to give them the best ROI ROI for their money. Uh, and we have to give the ratio has to get better every year. So even let's say a race that was that cost a hundred pounds last year or hundred euros or hundred USD, maybe it's cost next year it costs 105. But what I want is the, the experience of what you get back 
it's like 30% more than last year. And the price is only 5% higher. Right. So the, the ratio gets better and better. So people say, of course I pay that money for that, for that experience and for what I get. This is the best value for money I can get in, in, in racing. Um, and uh, so that's the job we have to do. Um, because we want the people to come back. We want the people to stay in the game. We want the people to be the best ambassadors we can find. You are totally right. Look, they go away, right? And they tell their friends, this was amazing. You have to do it. It's such a cool event. It's so well organized. Uh, everything you get. I feel like an elite athlete. Right. Uh, these are very, all these important things. Plus a great training, uh, which is the other very important part. We've talked a lot about the events. The biggest job we have to do is to now help the gyms to provide the best training for okay them. so so this is this is a complaint i have a confusion i have <laughs> i understand that we still don't know everything about high Rocks 365 i know there's more info coming however it seems as though and again maybe i'm maybe i'm mistaken you guys do seem to partner with a lot of different gyms or f45 or an app and some countries do different things and i feel like you might be doing yourself a disservice and creating some confusion there uh, I so know. i guess the question the question is i guess let me try see if i can try to phrase this you seem to be i'll just speak for you uh, my thoughts about you some people get greedy and they're like, well, we get everybody in the race. Now, how do we give them shoes and make money? How do we give them nutrition and make money? How do we give them an app and make money? I, You said earlier, it's not about money for you. However, of course, you want to be successful. So what well, is the plan? And what is the plan with that? With all these other factors, nutrition and training, what does Hyrox want to be for its customer? Because I think the beauty of Hyrox is... I can go to the Y, I can go to CrossFit, I can go to Orange Theory, I can go to all these places and train. Yes. Maybe some of them don't have machines, but I can go to all those. I don't have to go to a High Rocks gym, although the gym I go to may be an affiliate. So just go ahead. I've said a lot. No, exactly. That's what you said. I think we are such a foundational training, which, as I have to say, already lives in almost every gym that is around in the world. Uh, they didn't just didn't know it or they didn't know how to, again, we started at the beginning, they didn't know how to call it, they didn't know how to label it. And of course, uh, there was not a competition format existing. So now it's, it's, it's there, right? And it comes basically to every bigger city. We have a major event. So all the people have a purpose to train for this and why. So they're signing up for the event. Now they want to train for this. And there will be more people that love the training and they might not in the moment sign up for the events, but they love the training. Um, so that's why we, we our vision is that because Hyrox is so accessible, you can do it in almost every gym and you should, should be possible to train this in every gym that's out there. Whether it's Equinox, whether, whether it's Gold Gym, LA Fitness, Crunch, F45, uh, OFT, Barry's Bootcamp, and hundred thousands of individual gyms, functional fitness gyms, one location owned by one guy or one person, one girl that loves fitness and it was always a dream to run to run their own location. What we want is, I think, because we are so foundational that it will be, it will live in every gym. Uh, and because now there's a name, there's a training methodology. We, we try to define the training methodology. What is the amount of running versus the amount of strength uh, strength training to be good in this at the same time is a very healthy way of training and makes you very well-rounded fit. So it makes also a lot of sense for people that are not competitive and don't like to go to events, which I totally understand as well. Uh, so we want just to help the gym industry to provide proper, good fitness racing training. Uh, we help them how to configure it. They should configure their gym. We try because of examples and best case examples. And we, we help them to, to design the workouts and to do the programming, especially for group, for group class training. 
individually, it's it's much easier than doing something with a group of 30 people, right? That is a big, very different challenge to have true athletic training. Uh, you prepare people for a competition and, you, and you're doing this in a group of 30. So what's the, so what's the product offering of 365 and also partnering with these other gyms? Like how, what, what is the goal? I guess. Uh, it's two pieces. Very simple. One is, uh, is this website, which is now live and out and in the test phase, but it's, it's, we, all our gyms can, can have access to it, uh, where they can pull the training. Uh, and the, it's a service for the coaches and for the owners, where we every day we post a new workout. This follows the three months programming. Uh, but there's also an archive, and you can have a filter system. When you say, I don't have a ski erg, you can choose a different workout, which has a similar idea uh, for the day, but it's, you don't need to ski erg. And this is just a service for the coaches and gyms to make it as easy as possible for them to know, okay, this is what we do today with our people. Uh, and the other part is a digital academy where we help people to understand how do you, uh, how are you doing programming for individual athletes, for high, for fitness racing, for high rocks racing, and how to, and you can become a certified coach to make it very easily scalable, doable, reachable, and, and the price point is dramatically better than in other certification programs. We, we decided to create basically an online university where you, you, you can do it wherever you are, but it's pretty proper. It's quite a lot of content uh, and the real level one or the Hyros first level coaching that will be released on September 1st. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool. And it's we, we spend a lot of effort and really top-notch sports scientists and coaches and trainers, uh, great names that are providing the content. But the good thing is with a new sport, it's new for everyone, right? Uh, everyone is discussing the thing. How do you, how much do you run versus strength, how strong you should be, how big, how heavy versus your running ability. It's not solved yet. Uh, so that's why we see so many different, on elite level, we see so many different body types. Like from Tim Venish to, to the sheriff, to Hunter, like who's probably the strongest and heaviest of our... He said he got too skinny for the world champs though. <laughs> yeah, but you see, but the funny thing is he thought he has to get skinnier because of his running abilities, because the other guys are all skinnier than him. And I don't know, for some reason it hasn't worked out for him. Uh, he, he is stronger when he's a little big. I don't know, maybe when he's a little bigger or I don't know the real reason. But I know he's he spends a lot of time thinking about it. But that's a great thing about a new sport. And it will go on. You will never know the 100%, 1,000% clear formula. But look, breaking it down for the for everybody and for the for millions of people, it has to be... A, a very cool, very organized, very well delivered training that is fun, that is different every day, that is combining a lot of different movements and elements into your training. And we are adding in our in our training platform or when we are proposing trainings, we use also a lot of movements that are not part of the event. So uh, the event is not covering 360 degrees of of human movements right so we we are adding more stuff but we are, we never go complex like crossfit or right. we're never lifting maximum very heavy weights this is something we don't do that's not our dna that's crossfit uh and which is great and you have to be but you have to be extremely skillful to do it um and we are a much easier version to enter when you love fitness and you like the the training of fitness and now you have even a sport and you have even events so that how great is that right you suddenly you have another reason why you go to the gym G going going back to this the macro of the all these different countries you don't have to go region by region but i think some people are confused about who owns what are they franchises Can, you know like like for example the middle east gives away money in the middle of the season that has nothing to do with your majors or elite 15s like how does it how do the different regions work globally yeah 
it's, it's a mix of it. We own most of the important regions or we run them 100% in house, or it's in a joint venture where we control the company. So we, we control also the, the decisions, but we still have also historically in some regions, we, we have a franchise system where we try, of course, to educate the franchisee as much as we can and give them boundaries of how they have to operate events or how they should operate events, uh, which works pretty well. And sometimes something happens, which I'm not super happy with, because this is exactly the point. I don't want, I get it. They want to offer something which they think makes their events somehow more exciting or bring, drive some eyeballs for uh, on an event in Dubai, but we're all in the same ecosystem. So I'm not the biggest friend of that. Uh, I want them to s stick to the game plan and follow what everyone else is doing. Uh, but look, this is life. People, and they mean it in the best way. It's not. Right. They don't if want you it. saw a country, forget prize money, but if you saw a country and the quality of the product dropped and the experience dropped, could you, would you say, hey, if you don't f figure this out, like we're just going to take it from you? Like, do you, are you able to do that? Yes, we are. And just, we will, and we will do that. If someone is not, look, franchise is a very tricky thing, uh, especially. It's much more than giving someone a franchise for one gym in the location. But that's even also that is tricky. And you know the stories. Uh, when you when you grow too fast, you give out a too fast franchise uh, franchises and then they don't operate it in the way you want your brand be perceived. So we are now very cautious in giving away another franchise. Uh, we are almost not doing it anymore. It's the absolute exception, and it has to. It only it only makes sense if it's a very trustful partner in a market that's very very far away, <laughs> which which is very difficult for us to operate. And and South Africa is a perfect example. I think it's a great market for us. Uh, it will be very successful. We were looking around for quite a while to find the right partners, um, and we think we we have found them. Uh, but it's also very difficult also money from the from the financial aspects for us to run this country from here or to start everything from scratch and build a team and that's a lot of work and the market still somehow is limited uh, uh, than other regions in the world so that's why you think this is the best way to go there but on the other side we said we need to have south africa we need to have cape town and joburg uh, 100%. Uh, and then from there, we want to grow into Africa, into the southern, uh, the countries next to uh, South Africa and then the middle Africa. Uh, yeah, so it's like this, but we, it's, it's, we, we control them as much as we can, as narrow as we can. And if someone is not listening, and even after a couple of warnings, he's not doing it. And trust me, one thing, we jump in. We and we did this. We we sent some, we sent big teams down there when we have the feeling, oh, we don't know if this will work. If this will work out hundred percent to how we we which is our responsibility to deliver a Hyrox event because I understand that this is clear. It doesn't matter if I sign up for a Hyrox event and for for the athlete. It doesn't matter if this is a franchisee right. or company we own, it's high rocks. So it has to be the same standards, the same quality, etc. So if we have the slightest feeling of, okay, this is not working out on the standard we, we need to see, then we jump in and we would also invest money to save it. Uh, right. But then of course we have, then you have discussions with the franchisee because you don't want to go on like that. All right. Great news, everybody. Christian also told me where the majors are, how many of them are there, what American cities are we going to be in? But I can't show you any of that now. They're announcing that very soon. Today is the 19th, so depending on when you watch this, it may already be out, but it's not out yet. Please stay tuned. I'll be launching that video as soon as they announce it, so keep the channel right here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. We're at 798. Let us get to 800. Love you, miss you, mean it. I've got to run.